Good morning. My name is Jody Carlton. I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner with the inpatient newborn and breastfeeding medicine service here at UVA Health System. Uh, today we're going to talk about identification of a well newborn versus a sick newborn across the spectrum from pre-hospital to inpatient. What we want to talk about today is that your initial impression of the situation. Uh, things that you need to think about are key behaviors that is presented by the in our resuscitation program, it's important to know your environment. It's really important to know, are you in a teaching hospital on labor and delivery with a level four NICU that you can call? Are you in a small tertiary area hospital? Are you in the main OR instead of the L and D operating rooms? Are you in the emergency department? Or are you in the helicopter, airplane, back of an ambulance? Or are you in the field, in EMS, in a home, outside in a motor vehicle accident, in the local store? It's really important to know that every situation is different depending upon the environment you're in. All of the factors of the environment need to be factored in, especially in an EMS situation. Is the scene safe to approach? Is it cold or hot outside? Is there equipment and where is it located? And what are your resources? Some of the things to consider when the delivery is imminent, you know the baby is coming. It's really important to think about these things and know about them ahead of time. Uh, there are four important questions that the American Academy of Pediatrics through the neonatal resuscitation program have put out. These are the brand new updated eighth edition questions that you wanna think about prior to delivery. What is the gestational age of the infant? Do you know, are they preterm? Is this a 25 weeker? Or is this a 32 weeker or is this a 40 week gestation infant? It's really important to know the gestational age in order to be able to plan appropriately prior to the delivery for what you need. Is there any amniotic fluid? What is the color? Is it clear? Is it bloody? Does it have an odor? If it has an odor, is there a risk of infection? How long has she been ruptured? Those are really important things to know because it could set them up for increased risk of infection, depending on what that amniotic fluid looks like. Any risk factors, some of the risk factors now, it used to be that used to be the number of events used to be a separate question, but now that has been included in the risk factors. So are these triplets? Is this twins? Is this one, one baby that's coming? Other risk factors, um, is mom a gestational diabetic? Do we think that mom had preeclampsia? Do you think that she was at increased risk for bleeding? Has she had some thrombocytopenia? Is there, is there anything that any other risk factors prior to this baby being born? Another really important risk factor to look for and plan for is if there is a placental abruption. You will have to plan and do lots of things prior to delivery if you know that that has happened. Cord clamping plan. What is our plan? after delivery and why is that important? Are we delaying cord clamping so the baby has more time to receive the nutrients and the blood from mom from the placenta or are we automatically cutting the cord right after delivery and handing that baby off? All these things are important to know prior to the delivery and to be able to plan for that. After the baby is born, these are really important questions to ask and to be aware of. The very first thing is rapid evaluation of the infant. Is the infant term? Do we know the gestational age of this infant? Are we able to identify that? Sometimes you know that prior to delivery, but sometimes we don't know that. If the mom has not had prenatal care, um, if you come up on a motor vehicle accident, mom is unconscious, there could be multiple things that you don't know prior to the delivery of that baby. But if the baby is born and it looks to be term, you can try to guesstimate that if you're, if you're in the field or, or if you're in the hospital and we don't know, say they come into the emergency room and have had no prenatal care. Is it consistent with the, what the expected gestational age is for a newborn who is term or preterm? What is the tone? Are the extremities flexed or the, are they extended? Are they really floppy or the, is the baby flaccid? And is the baby active and moving? And the last thing, and really important, um, is the infant breathing or crying? Do they have a vigorous cry or are they gasping? Or is it somewhere in between? 
And it's important to know that all of these you're doing at the very same time. Once the baby is born, you're evaluating all these things at one time. Okay, Miss Smith, you're about to have your baby soon. Oh, how, what, do, what do we have? Hi, we've got a full term singleton pregnancy okay. and the amniotic fluid that ruptured five minutes ago was clear. Okay. Uh, and do you want to do a minute of delayed cord clamping? Yes, please. For all the benefits of baby. That's wonderful. Great. Mom, you're doing great. You're doing great. Baby's almost here. Oh, baby's, baby's here. Okay, baby's here and out. You have a beautiful baby. All right, and we're going to keep the baby down on mom's abdomen right now so we can do some delayed floor okay. clamping. We're going to stimulate. Um, we'll do the delayed floor clamping for one minute. The baby is uh, crying or needs some assistance with secretions in their airway. We'll bub suction the mouth and get rid of those secretions. And then we'll bub suction the nares on each side and get rid of those. All right, and we'll still stimulate the baby for one minute, continue to stimulate them. All right, is this baby crying? Oh, All I right. think we're up on, coming up on a minute. Okay, we're at one minute now. All right. Okay, Mom, we're gonna bring baby up on your chest here in just one second. Continue to stimulate the baby as we okay. do that. Okay. I'm going to bring the baby up on your chest, Mom. All right. We're going to link the baby over onto your chest. So. All right. And we're going to get rid of these wet blankets off the baby and put warm ones on the baby so we can keep baby warm while we're doing this. Making sure that the airway is open and clear. Um, while baby is on mom, mom can use her arms to support baby and help you support baby and keep them safe. While we're doing that, we're also assessing the baby's tone. Make sure they have good vigor and good tone. And this baby does. It's very active, um, crying and very alert. Um, if we need to suction the babies again, then we will. And we'll also change the blankets out again if need be. Keep the baby warm. All right. And then one can also put a hat on the baby. If we feel like we're not getting a good view of the uh, respiratory status, we can also um, turn the baby over on the back um, very slowly and look right on mom if we can't get a good view of the chest. Um, and then we can watch them um, breathe in and out without any issue. And then, of course, the umbilical cord is clamped at this time. Um, if baby is still vigorous and moving and active, we can turn the baby back over on mom. And then we can actually, if mom is ready and baby is doing well, no issues, we can um, put baby to rest to feed. Mom, would you like to feed your baby? Oh, yes, please. Okay, so we'll, we will assist mom to help breastfeed the baby um, at this time.